everyone. Welcome to Marin Community Clinic's Summer Solstice Celebration for what we expect to be our last virtual event. I'm Leah Andrews and I'm the Senior Director of Medical Operations at Marin Community Clinics. I can't wait to meet you all in person next year. Tonight, we hope you'll be inspired by what we do at Marin Community Clinics. We have been successful in providing quality care to and for our community here in Marin. Tonight we celebrate and we ask that you continue supporting our efforts. You will hear from our CEO, Dr. Matesh Popat shortly, and he will tell you more about our campaign for the next decade and the ways that we are touching lives through health. It's in that vein that I ask you to support us at any time during this event. All funds raised tonight will go towards the campaign, which you will learn about soon. Pledging your contribution is super easy. Use the chat bar to the right of the video, type in your name and a dollar amount. As an example, I would type Leah Andrews, $5 million. After the event, we will follow up with you by phone or email to confirm how you would like to make your payment. And now let's get on to celebrating together. We have a great program for you tonight. You're going to hear from some of our physicians and meet our incredible honorees, Dr. Tom Peters and Dr. Lisa Levitt. We also have some special remarks from State Senator Mike McGuire and U.S. Congressman Jared Huffman. Before we get the party started with our mixologist who will teach us how to make the solstice sipper, let's check out all of you, our guests who have been using our virtual photo booth available this whole week. all of you and here we are with our mixologist Rebecca with wine meets cheese and we're ready to get started with our solstice sipper tutorial yeah thank you for having me today we're gonna be making a Kentucky mule this is a fantastic classic cocktail uh, really icy cold great on a hot summer day um, so let's get started yeah let's do it so some of these ingredients you're gonna have in your event kit uh, we're gonna start with some Maker's Mark we have a little ginger beer. I have fresh squeezed lime juice, but you'll just have a lime. You'll have some mint. You have the very important cocktail umbrella to garnish that with. Uh, all of the other things that I'm going to be using on the table today, we'll talk about substitutions while we get there. Okay. All right. So to get started, we need crushed ice. This is really important to the cocktail. It's really nice to have a mug full of crushed, icy cold ice to pour your cocktail over. Um, most of us do not have a crushed ice machine at home, so we're going to crush right. our own ice. Fine. So to get started... You're going to need a clean kitchen towel. And if you have a really hard surface at home, you can just hold it. Give it a good squeeze so nothing's sneaking out. And you can just smash it until you have crushed ice. Oh, wow. In the interest of time and space, I'm going to use my citrus squeezer. You could also use a meat tenderizer. You could use a rolling pin. would probably work really well also. So I'm just going to wrap in my napkin. All right. And then, since we are at home in our own kitchens, I'm just going to use my hands to scoop this ice into the mug. So can you tell me while you're using the um, copper cup like that? Yeah, so that's also really traditional with the Moscow mule that the Kentucky mule is based off of. Okay. Um, basically, you just had 
uh, two people both trying to sell their products and no one was drinking vodka and ginger beer. Okay. And they thought, you know, if we put it into a really bright, shiny mug, maybe people will ask questions and want to drink this more. And it worked. Nice. I, I always know. wondered. It's a pretty cup, and I just it's wondered. It's beautiful. It also conducts the cold really well, so it gets an extra icy cold. Uh, and it should make the, the bubbles in the ginger beer just like a little bit brighter and sharper. Nice. So. All right, so we have our mug with our ice. Let me get my umbrellas back. So then we're going to take our mixing tin. If you don't have one of these at home, a uh, pint glass would be just fine. Any glass that's kind of thick, you don't want it to shatter in your hands, any point of the process. Then we're going to take our measuring tool. Um, this side for me is just one ounce. If you're doing this at home, one ounce equals two tablespoons. So we're going to do two full ounces, four tablespoons. Our makers. We're going to do a half ounce of lime juice. If you're squeezing your lime at home, you can use your handheld citrus juicer. You can squeeze it right into there. Half ounce should be about half a lime. Uh, maybe the full lime if it's a little bit on the smaller side. And then we're going to add more ice. Put your Ooh. top on. A Give it a little shake. Yeah. Do you want to try? I do. Oh okay, my God. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, make sure it's sealed, otherwise, you're going to end up wearing your cocktail. Okay. You did it so much cooler. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it helps if you get into like a little rhythm. Oh. No. I'm okay. <laughs> it's making noises. <laughs> I'll take it. Thank you. So for this cocktail, uh, we're really just mixing the ingredients. We don't have to shake it that long. Nice. Again, if you don't have the mixing tin, you can use a spoon and just give it a really vigorous stir, kind of like this. And then we're going to mix in a little ginger beer. Again, just to stir. And actually, I will just take this and... Mix it all up. We're just incorporating ingredients. And then I'm going to pour over my crushed ice. And what if I don't have a strainer at home? You what can use I a use? spoon. Okay, great. Yeah, big spoon, some kind of slotted spoon would be terrific. I mean, honestly, even just a regular dinner spoon okay. would do awesome. just fine. All right, so now we have our cocktail. We're going to garnish it. Obviously, we have our very important cocktail umbrella. Now, uh, normally you garnish this with limes, but fun story, we're in front of a green screen. <laughs> so uh, you're not gonna be able to see it. So I'm not gonna garnish it with a lime, but you do have one. I really like a lime wheel. I would cut yourself a lime wheel. And then we're gonna garnish it with mint as well. And you may not be able to see this, but it's really important with the mint that you wake it up a little bit. So okay. just gonna smack it on the back of your hand. You can also hold it in the palm of your hand and just give a little clap. I smell it. Yeah, I already smell it. It's really good. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're gonna throw that in there. Already adding to the cocktail. So now we have our alcoholic version, and if you're doing the non-alcoholic version, it's gonna be a little bit similar, but we are gonna muddle our fruit with this. And so uh, you're gonna take a couple lime wedges. Again, you can't see them, but I have two pretty good-sized lime wedges. And we're going to do about six to nine mint leaves. So just tear those off your mint sprig, throw them in the bottom. And then with muddling, you're really just kind of squeezing the juice out of the lime and breaking down the mint a little bit. So we don't want to make pesto. We're just going <laughs> to push the stick into the bottom and give it a little quarter turn. And again, if you don't have a muddling stick, you could use a wooden kitchen spoon. You could probably, again, use just a regular dinner spoon uh, and just get, again, kind of it like smells so a fragrant. little more mm. vigorous with it. And then I would mix the ginger beer directly into this and your ice. Give it a little stir, and then you're going to pour all of that directly into your copper mug, and then that is your non-alcoholic version of the same. Nice. Should we do a toast? We probably should. <laughs> All righty. Cheers. cheers. Okay. Cheers to all of you. And now over to you, Matesh. Cheers, everyone. Um, that was fantastic, wasn't it? Um, I'm going to have a sip. I hope you do, too. I'm Matesh Popat, CEO, Marin Community Clinics. Um, thank you for joining us tonight. It certainly has been a most challenging year. I think it goes without saying. Our staff had to make rapid changes, 
almost on a daily or weekly basis. You could imagine how challenging or disruptive that might have been. Our, some of our staff who could work remotely did as much as possible, as soon as possible. Other staff had to implement protocols around masking and social distancing for themselves, for patients, implement innovative practices such as parking lot waiting rooms and, uh, and, and, and other fantastically innovative things for our patients on a dime. And they had to do it so quickly. And they did. Mern Community Clinics as a whole has risen to meet the moment. The pandemic, it's not over yet, but we've made tremendous strides to caring for our patients and in our population and our community in spite of the challenges of the pandemic. And so today, on the solstice, we reflect on where we've come and we look forward to where we are going. And to that end, we're doing our first capital campaign in 13 years. We're trying to raise $8 million to support four key funding priorities. The first is to expand our services and our care for older adults and seniors. It's to ensure that our elders have access to high quality health care in an environment where their primary care doctors may be leaving or retiring, etc. So it's to make sure that our seniors have access to fantastic care. Our second key funding priority, priority is in the area of oral health, dental care. It's to make sure, again, that everyone has access to good quality dental care. Today, only one in two of our patients has access to oral health services. And that's not for lack of trying on the part of Marin Community Clinics. We have expanded our dental services progressively over the years since our dental, clinic, dental program started in 2008. And we provide the most oral health care in our region out of any other health center. But that's not stopping us from pushing the boundaries further and saying everyone deserves a dental home. Everyone deserves dent high quality dental services. And our third key funding priority is in the area of telehealth, care delivery innovation, expanding behavioral health care services is a key part of that. And we're raising funds for a location that where we can innovate the practices and the protocols and the health care delivery uh, services of the future. Our fourth key funding priority is in the area of healthcare workforce, human capital. Being in the human services industry where we provide care person to person and we touch lives through health, as our tagline says, human beings are always going to be required to provide healthcare. Human beings will be, are, are indispensable. And we've learned that most clearly through the pandemic, that in spite of telehealth and in spite of technology and all of that, in healthcare, human beings make the difference. So those are our four key funding priorities, and you're gonna hear more about them in the program ahead. I hope you enjoy, I hope you have fun, and I look forward to seeing you in person next year. I'm going to turn it over to Raquel Beltran. Thank you. You heard Dr. Popat say that there is a dental crisis in Marin County. So what exactly does a dental crisis mean? It means that if you live in Marin County and you're not fortunate enough to have dental insurance, there's not many places where you can go receive dental care. And it also means that you're probably neglecting your dental care. So here at MCC, our doors are open to everyone. 
And although we've made huge strides to provide comprehensive dental care in the community, there's still a huge need that we have to fill. So I do think a lot about the patients that we do currently serve. I think of all of the children that are now building up good oral hygiene habits. And we're teaching them the importance of taking good care of their teeth from a very young age. I think of the teenagers who are also learning about dental health care and taking care of their teeth and not having to think twice about where they're, which side of their mouth they're chewing on. I think about the adults who have now been able to smile with confidence and walk into a job interview and nail that job interview and do a great job because they're confident in their smile because they're no longer missing teeth. I think a lot about a recent story that we have of a patient that we helped who had broken his denture in several places. So this patient came to us and his medical doctor had mentioned that his health was deteriorating and he was diabetic. And typically a denture takes two to three months to be made by our laboratory. He didn't have that kind of time to wait. So our team quickly jumped into action and were able to help this patient find a temporary solution until we got his permanent denture. And when we did deliver that permanent denture, the smile on his face was priceless. And can you imagine how grateful he felt just being in his shoes and feeling that gratitude? And that's exactly why we're excited here at MCC, why we do what we do every day, why our patients are happy to see us, why we come to work every day. And we want to do more and more of it. And it's thanks to your generosity that we're able to provide more and more of this care and deliver great smiles in Marin County. Hi, folks. Thank you for including me in this summer solstice celebration. I want to begin by congratulating your special honorees, my good friend, Dr. Tom Peters, and of course, the wonderful Dr. Lisa Levitt. These are special people delivering good deeds for many individuals and groups, and I'm happy to be able to send congressional certificates of recognition to commemorate this occasion. I'm a big fan of the federally qualified health centers throughout my congressional district. Here in Marin County, Marin Community Clinics provide critical care to over 38,000 low-income and underinsured individuals. And during the COVID-19 pandemic, the staff really stepped up and went above and beyond the call of duty to help the community through this crisis. I join with your many supporters in expressing deep appreciation and gratitude for your work. When the pandemic required most people to work from home, Marin Community Clinics quickly enacted new physical safety measures, migrated from 0% to 80% telephone-based healthcare, battled PPE shortages, made unplanned purchases, and cared for frightened patients and staff to keep the clinic's doors open for everyone who needed in-person care. Thank you so much for doing this. Marin Community Clinics also partnered with the County of Marin to provide staffing for county COVID-19 test sites. In addition to testing at clinics in San Rafael and Novato six days a week, including in the evenings, thank you so much for doing that. And then when the COVID-19 vaccine became available, the clinics partnered again with the County of Marin Public Health Department and strategized, coordinated, and implemented the Equity Pod mass vaccination site in the canal area of San Rafael. And by March, they had administered over 8,000 vaccine doses. This contributed to Marin County being the top county in the state in terms of percentage of eligible residents receiving at least one dose of the vaccine, 82.9%. Thank you so much for that. I could say thank you uh, until I'm blue in the face and it wouldn't be enough. The work you've done this past year, the work you continue to do uh, is worth the deepest gratitude and also worth celebrating. So I'm glad that you are celebrating the summer solstice tonight. I look forward to doing this with you in person next year. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman Huffman, for your continued support of Marin Community Clinics and all that you do for everyone in our district. Now that you've heard a bit about our campaign and you will hear more, but I hope you've been inspired to support us tonight. Right now, please consider typing your name in the chat along with the donation amount you feel comfortable with and keep in mind, every dollar counts. Oh my, look at all of you donating. Thank you. I love seeing all these names rolling in. Keep them coming. Shout out to Doris Hunker and Nancy Slagle. You are most generous. Susan and Daniel Olson, thank you. Nancy and Stan Moore, thank you. It is so great to see your support coming through. Let's keep it up.
You are who make this successful. Thank you. Each donation, no matter the size, helps keep Marin healthy. And now, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the next two speakers. Recognizing community health champions is how we honor extraordinary individuals who have contributed to the health and well-being of Marin County's residents. Our first honoree is Dr. Lisa Levitt. We are recognizing her dedication and commitment to her work as a pediatrician serving generations of Marin Community Clinic's patients. She is also a community leader and a strong advocate for the children and families of Marin through her work with First Five Marin and the Marin Organizing Committee. Prior community health champion, Dr. Tracy Hessel said it best at our summer solstice honoree luncheon last week. How wonderful and unique Lisa is as a healthcare provider that she is warm, knowledgeable, and who always does what it takes for her patients to get the care and services they need. Many of our providers have shared that they were influenced by your reputation and the work that you were doing when they chose to come join Marin Community Clinics. And now, let's hear a conversation with Dr. Hessel and Dr. Levitt. I'm so honored and excited to be uh, celebrating the Solstice Champion Award being presented to my close friend and colleague, Dr. Lisa Levitt. Lise, you've been at the clinic for 20 years now, um, and I think the impact that you've had on our clinic, on the patients we serve, on our community is really immense. Um, for me personally, what I, what I see you having done is really established a culture of excellence of care, of comprehensive care, of recognizing that we have to treat the whole child and the whole family in order to have meaningful care, that a child can't thrive if they don't have access to stable housing, to healthy food, to support in their education and mental health. Um, you've done this in so many ways. You've elevated that both in helping us to develop resources within the clinic and through partnering, starting to address those issues on a community level. Um, and I'm wondering, as you look back on these past 20 years, what you're most proud of? Thank you, Tracy. I don't know that I um, can take credit for all of that. I think the clinic was really moving in that direction of um, providing um, services that really met our, our patients' needs, and that wasn't just taking care of their physical health. Um, as we know, there's so many things that contribute. Um, to that, and um, some of the most basic needs uh, need to be addressed before we can really focus on a child's health. Um, two ways I think that I've been able to kind of dive more deeply uh, is through the Marin, the Marin First Five Commission. So I joined the commission in 2012 and um, learned how to be a board member, learned how to uh, use my voice as an advocate, um, use my pediatrician, superpower, <laughs> trusted messenger uh, before the board of supervisors, before uh, city council meetings, um, to really elevate um, the voice of our, our families. Um, I think it's intimidating and, and I think helping um, elevate those voices is, is critical um, for our for our decision makers in Marin. Yeah, and you've really, I feel like you've really expanded the, the reach and the, the voice of our clinics um, by inspiring us to, um, to partner with the Marin Organizing Committee, which was very new and different for us. Can you speak a little to that? Sure, I mean, I remember when we were having conversations in 2018 about uh, whether the clinic should join the Marin Organizing Committee. It just, um, it felt like kind of a natural fit uh, for us as we were exploring at the clinic and, and focusing much more clearly on social determinants that uh, the platform of the Marin Organizing Committee as a sort of multi-member uh, institution, uh, multi-issue uh, organization would, would um, help us uh, to advocate um, in a more powerful way. This year has been such a hard year for so many people in so many ways. Um, many of us, I think, are left feeling pretty fatigued. <laughs> um, I'm wondering what, what sustains you? What little glimmer of hope are you holding on to right now? 
Um, and I, you know, as we all know, the past year has had, you know, a very um, inequitable impact um, on our patients. And there have been many dark moments and moments of intense, you know, pain and grief and struggle. Um, but I think yet through that, um, mental health really took um, the limelight. I mean, I, I think it's, it's been in the headlines, it's been in the news, I think it's, it's on, you know, the top of our, everybody's mind, um, is how are we going to um, meet the mental health needs of our youth. Um, and there are certain things that I think give me hope. I think coming out of this um, mental health month of May, um, I've really watched um, the youth and listened. Um, and I think that they will lead us. Um, they put on their own wellness uh, series, uh, which was impressive. They've made movies. Um, I think um, that this, this year will bring increased amounts of funding to actually um, make some very impactful uh, changes that will benefit our patients and their mental health. Well, and I know your commitment to this work isn't ending with this award, but I'm just thrilled to have you being recognized for all the, the work and contributions. Hi, how are you? My name is Dr. Jose Chibras. I'm an internal medicine physician here at MCC. And welcome to the 21 solstice. It's virtual again. Next year, we'll do it in person. And wasn't that an extraordinary presentation that was done by Dr. Levitt and Dr. Hessel, some of the most amazing dedicated physicians we have here at MCC. And what I'd like to do this evening is kind of let you know what some of the responsibilities that I have as a chief medical officer are here. It's kind of really one of the most important things that I do. I know there's a lot of things besides patient care, but one of the most valuable resources that we have at MCC are the extraordinary dedicated physicians that we have that have been here for decades. Great example is Dr. Hessel and Dr. Levitt. They're some of the most amazing individuals. Pediatricians have been here for decades taking care of families. Now just think about yourself when you come into the office and how it is to see your physician who you really care about who also cares an awful lot about you and has known you for years. What an incredible difference that makes for quality of care and health outcomes. And we pride ourselves at MCC in having individuals that stay with us for decades and take care of our patients we're entrusted and have the privilege to serve. So what I'd like to do this evening is kind of, you know, take you through a, a little, little journey as a young physician who comes to MCC when we recruit them. Just recall, it takes about 12 years for a doctor to become a doctor after high school. That's an awful long time. And they incur sometimes four or $500,000 in debt. And when we recruit them to Marin County, which is one of the most amazing, beautiful places on earth to live, they love it. They're in the Bay Area. Recall also that there's a lot of healthcare facilities and organizations, very competitive market here in the Bay Area. And so there's a lot of competition for us to recruit individuals with some of the private doctors, the big institutions, you know who they are. You know how they thrive and they do everything else. Well, we need to do the same thing. We need to thrive and we need to make sure that we keep some of the most important assets that we have and those are our physicians who are here for decades. So what I'm asking you individuals to do is to help us. When individuals stay here for five or six years, sometimes some of the competition wants them to leave and go somewhere else. And we really, really want your support and thank you for your support as we ask for recruitment and retention funds to make sure that our physicians like Dr. Hessel and Dr. Levitt are here for at least decades to take care of your, your families. We know that quality is paramount and continuity of care is so important when we take care of lives. So. If you came into an office for 10 years, your doctor and yourself would have a relationship that's extraordinary. You know your doctor, your doctor knows you. They're intelligent, they're compassionate, they're bilingual, they're bicultural, they understand the social terms of health, they understand the community they live in, they know the resources, 
Healthcare is 20% of what we do. The other 80% is the community. And our doctors are able to co hopefully connect all of our patients, the resources they, they need, which are the biopsychosocial and spiritual things that make healthcare important. I thank all of you. I thank you for your support and enjoy the solstice. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. Thank you, Dr. Chibras. Now it is my honor to introduce our second ever Lifetime Achievement Community Health Champion, Dr. Thomas Peters of Marin Community Foundation. To highlight the impact he has had on Marin, we will now hear from some of his friends and colleagues. Tom Peters, congratulations and thank you for making my job a lot easier as public health officer for Marin. As you know, Marin County has been ranked the healthiest county in the state of California 11 of the past 12 years. And every year when the rankings come out, people will ask me as health officer, what is it about Marin County that consistently leads to such healthy outcomes? And I, I say, do you know this guy named Tom Peters? Um, actually, obviously, it's a lot of things to go into that. But Tom, in all seriousness, you, you have been at the center of what I think is a culture of leadership within Marin that has constantly strived towards health equity and really didn't stand back and allow inequities to continue, but actually proactively hunt down and solve issues of inequity within Marin County. And that's a, that's a culture that you have helped foster. Also doing that through collaboration. I think one of the things I've learned from you is that when we want to be successful as a county, we need to be collaborative. So I see that as a key part of your legacy. I wanna thank you for that as public health officer um, and I promise to try and continue that work. What an honor to be here today to recognize, appreciate, and show our caring for Tom Peters. What a guy, an icon, the most trustworthy, the most caring for all people in all walks of life, and always able to solve a problem and negotiate the unnegotiable. Tom is my friend, my mentor, my longtime colleague, we have done amazing, fun things in this community, but his leadership is beyond compare. Tom, we thank you for everything you've done for the County of Marin and for everybody around you and around us that has seen growth and positivity for many underserved, underrecognized, and underappreciated people who so deserve it. Thanks for everything. So hi there, Dr. Peters. Um, first, I wanna tell you that I have never been more inspired by anyone than you. Um, and I'm not sure what it is because it's not just one thing you do, it's everything you do. You lead with compassion, you lead with kindness, but most importantly, courage. Um, when I think about people who are willing to call out the most important things that our community needs to address, I always think of you, and I always think of equity, I think of access, and I think of injustice. And what you've done is spent your entire career, whether in San Francisco, in Marin, um, making sure that all of us knew, um, and sorry, that all of us were sure that everything we were doing was addressing the most critical issues. You remind me um, that we need to work hard, um, to ensure that we're making a difference. I wanna grow up to be just like you, Dr. Peters. Tom, it's a real pleasure for me to be here on the occasion of your Lifetime Achievement Award and to say a few words really in praise of you being you. I think you've functioned as a, as a North Star for all to take guidance from for both the county, the state, and more recently, the country. Bringing together community philanthropy and public good has been a spectacular accomplishment. I think you're able to do this for four basic components. One, your integrity. You are trustworthy and people want to follow you. And I think that's a, an incredible qu 
quality. You have compassionate understanding of the human condition and the force fields and communities that create both thriving and uh, conditions that are uh, really quite terrible. You have a vision of what is possible. You can see over the curvature of the earth and know where you're going. And that's a wonderful quality to have. And the last, you're, you're able to articulate all that you're thinking about, whether it's the strategy, the understanding of the condition, and you do it in such a wonderful, heartfelt way. We all get it and know that we should be better by hearing you present. Thank you for all you've done and all you will do. Hi, Tom. Pat Kendall here. I'm so happy to be here to say a few words. I, I want to say that you led our county with a legacy of health officer to Dr. Larry Meredith and now to Dr. Matt Willis. We have been so fortunate to have had your leadership in the beginning, and it's continued with um, the same respect, the same uh, power, the same um, kindness, and the same demand for excellence. Um, you're a man that, um, if I had to name some of the people that I believe are my heroes, you would be there. Everything from, I can't wait when I see you to get the hug that I get and give you a hug back. Um, and that, to me, speaks to you as a person and your openness and, and your, your love for everybody. Um, it also speaks to the fact that um, uh, you've taken a seat at many tables. You could take a seat at the highest tables there are, and you've taken a seat at tables where there wasn't even a table. And at all of those tables, you made the people sitting around them feel necessary, feel wanted. You listened to them, and out of that came great things for Marin County and for all of us. Um, you're an amazing, amazing man. Um, with a wonderful spirit, and um, I can't believe this county with, without you, but I don't think you'll be too far away, and you certainly will never, never, never be too far away from our hearts. We love you, we thank you, and we wish you the best. Even though Dr. Tom Peters is getting a Lifetime Achievement Award, I don't think Dr. Tom Peters is done. Um, I think um, Tom, you all know Tom, he's a phenomenal leader. Um, I view him as a, as a North Star a bit. Um, and he has guided health and well-being and educational advancement and a whole host of other things. You know, Tom is, uh, provides moral leadership in, in our county and helps. I remember his speech at our um, solstice event in 2016 when someone was elected, and it was literally the next day Tom was talking, and Tom gave an, an indignant spe <laughs> speech that was just fitting that he had literally written in like the hours before because the election result was the night before. So he couldn't have written it in days in advance. And it was just poignant and captured the moment amazingly well. And, you know, Tom is just a, a phenomenal healthcare leader, community leader, and, you know, the bar is pretty high for whoever is coming next, Tom, So, um, or big shoes to fill. So thank you for all that you've done for Marin Community Clinics and your support for, of the organization and the community and healthcare at large and all that you've done. So, Tom? It's a particular honor uh, to be in this, in this gathering. Um, I thought, of, uh, I thought of three things as I was thinking about Marin Community Clinic and my long association with all of you. Um, Linda Tavasi will remember the first, got the reference earlier to the trailers being moved uh, to the parking lot. Um, I remember when I came over from San Francisco, I asked, uh, how, how is it that the Marin Community Clinics are in the trailer in the parking lot? Where, what, what kind of permitting do you have to do to, to get that done? Uh, at which point people said, do, do you want to see the cafeteria? Uh, uh, <laughs> and uh, not too long after that, a year or two after that, um, I was coming through the, the uh, Marin Community Clinics with a crew from NBC, um, Dateline NBC. And um, 
the cameramen were standing there and, and the, the, the uh, clinics were shaking side to side. And they said, is it, you know, we, we can't get a good shot with the, with, we're trying to get the clinicians and the, the, the front office staff and patients. We can't get a good shot because the, the damn thing is going side to side. So I, I thought, I thought in, in that regard about, about what you have done on, on this word of stability. Uh, and I really, you know, I think of the, of the leadership that it took past boards and staff, current uh, board and staff, volunteers, you know, what you've, what you've built in terms of the stability of the Marin Community Clinics in this community is really uh, remarkable. The second reason I'm so absolutely pleased and honored to be, uh, to be with you today is thinking about what you've done at the clinic in terms of wholeness. Mitesh, you just referenced, um, you know, thinking about individual clients and their families as whole units. And, and the fact that you have moved from uh, looking at, at an individual issue or, or, or injury or disease of, a, of an individual patient, instead pulling that camera back and really looking at, looking at the individual as a whole person, emotionally, socially, fiscally, familially, um, is really a tribute to the, to the concepts that are, are guiding you. But the third thing that, uh, that I thought of uh, with regard to your work is much more ethereal, uh, but I, I would suggest is the most important, and that's trust. I, I really, I really uh, reflected on the fact that the Marin Community Clinics have over these years with all of you and all of the folks that, that came before you and, and, and work with you now, to build the kind of community trust that you have, that the Marin Community Clinics really are an island of trust. And when you think about it in our community, it's one of, it's one of, the, one of the really sad and, and challenging aspects of, of our time, is that there are so many people, and certainly so many of your patients and your your, your patients and their families who don't really have many places in their lives that are trusting. And the fact that you've, you've developed uh, a kind of understanding and empathy and have, have exhibited and manifested the trust that those patients and families can bring to you is a great tribute. Thank you. Dr. Peters, you have inspired so many people here tonight and throughout your career. A huge congratulations to you. And even though you're retiring from the foundation, we know you remain a powerful force for change. I'll be looking for you next year at our 50th anniversary celebration. Okay. So far tonight, we have raised $12,850, but our work is not done. If you've liked what you heard, if you wanna support a healthier Marin, if access to affordable quality healthcare matters to you, and I know it does, go to the chat box if you have not done so already. And if you have, please donate again. Uh, please make your pledge there. And we'll share a few of the donations that we've received so far. Eric Bretner, thank you. Matesh Popot, thank you. Judith Sneed, thank you. John Bolin III, DDS, MSD, thank you. We appreciate you. We are so thankful for your donations. We see you and we thank you. Let's get back to our final segments tonight. Next up is Dr. Xavier Perez, who will talk to us about what Marin Community Clinics is doing to serve the aging community here in Marin County.
Hi, my name is Xavier Perez, and I am the medical director for Marin Community Clinic's uh, Larkspur and Greenbrier site. Um, this is our adult uh, and senior uh, clinics. Um, it's no secret that the population in Marin uh, is aging. Uh, in fact, it's projected that over the course of the next decade, uh, we'll have about 37% uh, of our population will be over the age of 65. Uh, with this reality uh, comes uh, several challenges. Uh, how do we care for the elderly in our community? Uh, how do we care for the socioeconomically disadvantaged? Uh, what resources can we bring to bear uh, at the community level and at the health level to support these uh, seniors? Our Greenberry Clinic uh, is focused on providing comprehensive and quality care to our elderly population. Uh, the average patient over the age of 65 uh, uses approximately uh, nine or more uh, medications. Uh, a team-based approach to care allows for the most efficient and quality uh, care. Uh, on site, we have nutrition services, behavioral health services, as well as pharmacy services uh, to provide coordinated and quality care. The Green Bay Clinic helps our patients live a healthy and successful life. Uh, supporting our clinic, is supporting uh, healthy and successful aging in Marin. Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Mike McGuire, State Center, and I gotta tell you, I am thrilled to be with you. Thank you so much for having me. And I wanna say congratulations. Congratulations to our two community health champions that we're honoring today. Dr. Levitt, Dr. Peters, we love both of you. Dr. Levitt has dedicated her life to caring for Marin's most vulnerable kids. And Dr. Peters, well, he's invested literally tens of millions of dollars to improve health outcomes and access through his role with the Marin Community Foundation. Now, Marin Community Clinics, they have been a lifeline for their patients. They provide award-winning healthcare close to home and their team during this pandemic, they have been busier than ever. They have never missed a beat and they continue to step up to serve those in need. In fact, they continue to expand their capacity during this terrible public health crisis, and they're gonna scale up operations even more. Get ready to see two new medical service sites, one in East San Rafael and the other in Greenbrae. But here's the deal. Marin Community Clinics, they can't do this expansion without us. They need us to step up, and they have stepped up like never before during this pandemic, and tonight we need to step up for them. This evening, I'm gonna ask you to please raise your glass and to open up your wallet, to say thank you for their incredible work and donate generously. Give what you can in order to help them fulfill their mission of promoting health and wellness through excellent and compassionate care. Thank you so much for having me and let's continue the great work of Marine Community Clinics. Thank you, Senator McGuire. Your leadership is inspiring. Thank you, Matesh, and thank you to all our incredible speakers tonight. Congratulations again, Lisa and Tom. Folks, we have a few new names in the chat that I wanna recognize. Thank you to the family of Lisa Levitt. Also, thank you to Sharin Bakaria. Thank you so much. I am so thrilled to tell you that our number now is $13,850 in support of our campaign for the next decade and all of the projects you've learned about tonight. You can continue to give after tonight by contacting Lindsay, Isabella, or gifts at marinclinics.org. Again, that email address is gifts at marinclinics.org. If you haven't taken your virtual photo yet, our Solstice photo booth is still open. Please check the link being reposted now in the chat. Now, if you wanna keep the party going, join us in the mingling area by clicking over to networking. And to take us out tonight, let's look at some of our photos from this week and tonight. Good evening, everyone. Thank you and have a happy and healthy summer.
Thank you.